Although, again, even in the United States, there's a real sense of lose win uh, of, of zero sum uh, zero sum thinking. And in Europe, that has become dominant. And I think you're, you're seeing that frustration, that angst among people who don't quite understand what is going on, who don't know why this is happening and what is happening. Uh, you're seeing that all over Europe. And I think that the latest manifestation of that, we'll talk about two manifestations of that. One is the, the growing uh, farmer strikes uh, really uh, all across Europe. Uh, right now, what's making the headlines in the United States is primarily uh, the strikes in, uh, in France. I think, I think uh, the latest headlines were something like French farmers have basically uh, surrounded Paris and, uh, and Paris is under siege, but, but that's just, you know, hysterionics. Uh, but there is, there is uh, uh, you know, Paris farms aren't circling the capital. I think police are preventing them from actually blocking in and out of, of Paris, but they are out there, uh, tractors all over the place, um, and, uh, and they're protesting, but it's not just in Paris. A few weeks ago, the same phenomena was happening in Germany. If you remember last year, we had a big uprising of farmers in the Netherlands that led to a major uh, political win for them, uh, you know, last year. Uh, you're also seeing, um, uh, you're also seeing, uh, you know, farmers uh, take out the tractors and go out into the, into the roads in Greece, in Romania, uh, and I think in much of Europe. Uh, so this is now a, a Spain, uh, this is a, a European phenomenon uh, where, 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 uh, tr uh, where uh, farmers are protesting. And, and, it, and you can see kind of the thinking and the zero-sum thinking and the distorted thinking in what they're protesting about. Because what you get is a mixture of things that are true and right and things that are, that are wrong and distorted. So w w what are they... What are they um, what are they protesting against? On the, on the good side, uh, much of the protest, and this goes back to the Netherlands, much of the protest is about environmental regulations that are making it more and more and more expensive for the farmers to actually produce, to produce, uh, uh, to produce uh, uh, their, uh, their crops. Uh, so so uh, they're, they're, they're uh, protesting against the climate change uh, uh, regulations the environmental regulations, the, the regulations regarding all of that stuff, uh, they, are, they are upset about and uh, they want the government to reduce those. That's good. Uh, uh, generally, they're, they're upset about bureaucracy and growing bureaucracy and uh, growing difficulties for them to be able to grow what they want, sell what they want, get to market what they want. So, so just a kind of a the bureaucracy uh, is bad. And then, alter and then uh, in addition, on, on the good side, uh, you, would, uh, you would add, you know, they're protesting inflation, uh, as, as most of us would want. Uh, you know, they're protesting the fact that a lot of what is going into raising crops and to growing, uh, to growing uh, agricultural products, all the inputs have risen in price, and, uh, and they're complaining about that. And uh, so... So they have, uh, you know, of course, they can also sell for more expensive. Food in the grocery stores is more expensive. They're selling food to the grocery stores more expensively. So uh, farmers in Europe are passing on the cost of inflation to consumers. There's no doubt about that. But why not complain about that? What the hell? Throw it in there uh, with everything else. I don't think the profit margins have gone down because of inflation. Businesses typically pass on the cost of inflation to consumers. Inflation is a cost borne almost exclusively by, uh, by consumers. Unless, uh, you know, government is putting price controls. On the negative side, the other two things that they're complaining about, one is uh, reductions in the EU on subsidies. They want more subsidies. They want to be subsidized to a greater degree. They want some of the zero-sum thinking, some of the zero-sum dividing up of the welfare state to come to them. So they want to be subsidized. The French farming industry has been subsidized for many, 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 many decades. Uh, and, uh, and they only want more. They don't want less, right? And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is, of course, again, the kind of thinking. There's a, 
there's a payout there. The government has all these revenues. They decide who the winners and losers are. We're not getting enough of that pie. We, we need more of that pie allocated to us. And then finally, in what I think at the end of the day, they fear the most and, 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 and is, is most uh, discerning, it, it, it causes the most discontent, and again, zero sum thinking, is the protesting against competition, competition from outside the European Union, the competition from Ukraine. Ukraine is selling a lot of its agricultural products into Europe because it's, it's much more difficult to Ukraine to sell uh, by shipping through the Black Sea. They still do, but it's, it's much harder with the Russians there. Uh, and the EU has loosened up a lot of the con import controls from Ukraine because of the war. So there's a lot of agricultural product flowing in from Ukraine that didn't flow in before, 20, before the war started. And then the rest of the world. I mean, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the, there's a lot of producers out there in the world that produce food a lot cheaper than Europeans do. Uh, the Americans are somewhat limited because the Europeans will not allow in GMO, which is another thing that keeps them backward, if you will, uh, uh, European farmers. They're not allowed to use GMO, genetically modified uh, organism, genetically modified food stuff. In the U.S., of course, you're allowed to. In, in Asia, they use it a lot. And, of course, it, it increases yields. It, it produces, uh, in some ways, better crops. And uh, it's a huge cost uh, advantage, which the Europeans don't have. But look, they also have a massive food production going on in, in, uh, in Africa uh, and in non-EU parts of Europe, which they have to contend with. And for that... There are massive tariffs in place. There are very large restrictions on importation of food into Europe. But the challenge, uh, uh, you know, of course, there is that keeps costs up of food in Europe. Your food costs are very high. Uh, and some food comes in anyway because it's so much cheaper to grow it overseas that even with the tariffs and restrictions, some of the food still makes it in. So um, uh, tariffs are going to be, uh, and, and uh, trade is going to be a big issue uh, for farmers uh, moving forward. Uh, I mean, look, one of the great travesties today are the, are the tariffs that Europe places on food uh, and on agricultural products. Imagine if those tariffs went away. A lot of French farmers would lose their jobs. There's no question about that. But France, France, one of the most advanced, richest, freest countries in the world is really way too agricultural. There are way too many farmers in France. Usually developed, advanced, technologically sophisticated, relatively wealthy countries are not doing agriculture. France does do agriculture, continues to do agriculture. It's not its comparative advantage. Imagine, and I've said this in Europe, when I do my European tours, I say this to audiences, imagine how much cheaper food would be in Europe if they dropped the tariffs, if they actually competed on a level playing field with Africa and with the rest of the world in food stuff. First of all, it would provide Africans with a huge amount of income. It would probably drive Africans out of poverty. There are massive, uh, there's a massive ability to bring industrial farming into Africa. There are vast areas that could produce huge quantities of food and grains for consumption in not only in Africa, it would lower the prices in Africa itself, reduce the problems of, of uh, food shortages in Africa. But it would also reduce the price of food dramatically in Europe and raise the standard of living by reducing cost. Many farmers would lose their jobs. And they would have to find more productive activities. But they are more productive activities. That's the beauty of comparative advantage, which the Africans have. That's the beauty of trade. That's the beauty of, you know, specialization. Europe does not have, given the cost of land, given the cost of capital, given the cost of everything, Europe does not have a comparative advantage 
in food. Maybe wine in France and Italy and Spain, I don't know, Portugal. Europeans do make great wine. I mean, but that's about it. So, you know, the, the, the truckers will go out there and I'm, the, the farmers will go out there and I'm all with them on the regulation stuff. Uh, I wish they didn't advocate for more subsidies and more tariffs. If they just advocate for doing away with the regulations, that would be great. Uh, and ultimately, what we all should be advocating for is to get rid of all government involvement in agriculture, get rid of all government intervention in the growing of food uh, and, 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 and let the markets work and let the global markets work. Imagine how much richer, imagine how much richer we would be if we actually had free trade, not selectively, not when we choose to, not once in a while, but really free trade. Isn't it interesting that the European Union means free trade, zero tariffs inside Europe? It's good for the Europeans to trade with one another with zero tariffs. Why not extend that to the rest of the world?